So in today's lesson, we're going to look at the bull reproductive organs. So this picture shows you guys what um, the body of the bull looks like. So just quickly for reference, over here we have the tail of the animal. So this is the hindquarters, the back side of your bull, and the head would be on this side, on the left-hand side. So just quickly, you guys, again, don't, don't have to be able to sketch this entire thing. In the exams, they will give you this sketch. Um, either without any labels or they will give some labels as a reference and ask you to um, give the labels of others. So in this case they could make this area say A, this one B, this one C and so on and then you have to give the names of those areas. Okay, so no sketching. So just quickly, let's start from a reference point. They start with the testers. So over here Remember, all bulls have two testicles, but in this picture, we can't see the other one. It would be at the back side of this one or behind this one. So here we have one testicle, one testis, and this is usually where your sperm is produced. Sperm and also your hormone testosterone. So around your sperm, if my mouse will work, you have the epididymis right over here. So the epididymis is actually the area that stores the sperm. It's made inside the testis or the testicles and then stored right over here. And before we go on on the inside, on the outside, this area, the bag-like structure that holds the testicles are called the scrotum. So the scrotum is the skin area right on the outside. So again, we can actually see with the bull, the testicles and everything is basically on the outside of the body of the cow because he is the one leg of the cow, the hind leg. This is on the inside of the cow, on the inside of the structure. But the testicles are, well, they hang outside the body, basically. And we're going to talk about the reason for that now, now. Okay, so from the testicles, we have the epididymis area that stores the semen. And from here, we've got this tube that will take the sperm and the semen all the way up to this part. So from here, this part is called the vas difference. So this is the tube that connects your testicles to the rest of the reproductive organs. So the vas difference. From the vas difference, I just want to say the top part of the vas difference, this area right here, is very, very thickened. And this area is known as the ampulla. So again, it's thickened to allow more of the sperm to come through here. And it's also a thick muscular area. So usually during ejaculation, which is that process whereby the sperm exits out of the body, um, the muscles of the impilla actually contract and it allows more of the sperm to go through the vas deferens to eventually, where's my mouse, go through here, through here, and eventually leave the body through the penis. Okay, so from the ampulla, we have specific glands that can either secrete nutrients for the sperm or uh, mucus to also help lubricate the sperm. So the first one we get to, if my mouse will work, um, these two structures right here, two on either side of your ampulla, would be the seminal vesicles. So the seminal vesicles that actually secrete um, nutrients for the sperm so that they keep on moving and survive and be able to swim further. You've got your prostate gland right over here. So the prostate gland is over the, the urethra of the, of the male. And the prostate, again, is also there to secrete an alkaline secretion. And okay, we're going to talk about more of the functions in the next slide. But yeah, anyway, the prostate is over here, very, very important. It uh, secretes alkaline solution. And then it goes here through the urethra. Here we have the label, urethra. This entire area right here. So again, this structure is both where the sperm and also the urine can come out. Okay, so from here, then this structure right here, the external structure would be your penis of the cow. Oh out the bull, penis of the bull right over here. Oh, and I missed one of the glands right over here, a little bit further away from your prostate, is the calpers glands. And the calpers glands also secrete some mucus to help lubricate the sperm, which means help them to swim um, through the rest of the reproductive structure. Okay, now I just also want to mention something very fascinating is we have the retractor muscle. So the retractor muscle is right over here. So you guys can see it um, attaches from the tail or inside the tail area all the way to the urethra right here. So what this does, the retractor muscle, is it allows the penis to either exit the body or it allows it to pull back into the body. So it's called the glass. Um, so the glance penis is at the outside right here. But the retractor muscle either pulls back the penis into the body or it allows it to go 
um, outside of the body. So this helps with ejaculation, meaning when mounting happens, copulation happens. In the, oh, by the way, copulation means when a bull mounts a cow and he inserts his penis into the vagina of the cow. So the, the retractor muscle is actually that muscle that allows this process to happen, helps copulation. Okay, let's quickly look at the, pro, or the functions of all these organs. So first of all, again, the testes. This is where sperm and testosterone is produced. So the sperm itself is produced in the seminiferous tubules. So inside the testicles, there are these tubules, tubule structures. Um, I want to say almost like snake-like structures on the inside of the sperm. Of the, the testicles, and that is where the sperm is produced. So you guys must just be, able, be aware of the words the seminiferous tubules. Then thirdly, sperm, the sperm production itself, or that process, is known as spermatogenesis. You guys don't have to know this process in detail, but you have to be able to know the name spermatogenesis and also give the definition. So spermato, spermatogenesis is the production of sperm. Then also something interesting, the cells of Leydig, I want you guys to remember, the cells of Leydig are cells in, in between the seminiferous tubules inside the testes that produce testosterone. So these are special glands, cells of glands that produce testosterone. Then secondly, testosterone, they give the male characteristics to a bull, meaning it has a sex drive, um, it's masculine, all those characteristics, it has a bit more hair, um, broad shoulders, big body, all those things. Then also testosterone is the hormone that gives the bull its sexual desire or sexual drive, meaning the bull wants to mount, mount a cow and service the cow. Then lastly, it stimulates also sperm production. So without the testosterone, we actually won't have the sperm. Then also I want you guys to see the structure of the sperm at the bottom here. Again, you don't have to sketch it, but many times they will also give you this um, sketch of a sperm and then ask you also to label it. So the first part, we've got the head area. In the tip of the sperm head area, we've got the acrosome. So the acrosome actually has special enzymes that allows it to be able to penetrate an egg cell during fertilization. Then also you've got your nucleus area and the nucleus is where all the DNA is. So again, this is the DNA of the sperm that will fuse with the DNA from an egg cell. Okay, the centriole part is not important. Then we've got the middle area. Please remember, this is where we find the mitochondria. And the mitochondria are these organelles that create energy for the sperm. So without the mitochondria or without this middle piece, the sperm will not be able to swim. So this gives the energy for the sperm to be able to swim. And the last bit, is the tail area, also known as the flagellum. And again, this enables the sperm to be able to swim. So without a tail, it won't be able to swim. Okay, then we look at other sex organs and accessory glands. So here we have the epididymis first. So the epididymis, you remember, is around the testicles. And that's the area that stores the sperm. And also this is the area where semen is created. So please remember, semen itself is basically your sperm plus any fluid that some of the other accessory organs, accessory glands will um, secrete. So meaning any nutrients, um, that alkaline solution, the mucus. So all of that that is secreted by the accessory glands um, along with the sperm gives you your semen. Okay, then secondly, a vast difference of the tube that transports your semen slash sperm, basically same thing. It transports it to the rest of the body. Then also the top thick part of the vas difference is known as the ampulla. Okay, so then we have the seminal vesicles. So I mentioned quickly the seminal vesicles, it secretes a sticky fluid that serves as a food source for the sperm. So it gives nutrients to the sperm. And also second thing, both in um, cattle and in humans that it does, it regulates the pH of the semen. So again, it makes it a little bit more alkaline. So then lastly, you've got your prostate gland. It secretes an alkaline solution as well that neutralizes the female's acidic environment. So within her body, again, we mentioned the same thing for humans, is that the body, it must be acidic to prevent any bacteria and viruses and microorganisms from entering into the female body and harming her reproductive organs. So again, the sperm kind of have to get, have like a, a way around this because otherwise the acidic environment will kill the sperm. So it secretes also this alkaline solution from the prostate glands to keep the sperm alive. 
Okay, yeah, that's just for interest sake. Yeah, I put in a, fic a picture of a semen, basically. So here we see all the little sperm on the inside, here all the heads and the tails. And then the fluid, all the gray around it, would be your liquid. So the nutrients, the mucus, and so on. So this would be a sample of semen. Okay, then the rest of the sex organs and accessory glands. We've got the cowper's glands. It lubricates the sperm to improve mobility, meaning it moves. So the lubrication or the secretions from the cowper's glands allow the sperm to swim better and quicker through the urethra and into the female body. Then the scrotum itself. The scrotum, again, is that sac-like structure or the skin structure around the testicles. So it protects the test testes or the testicles. Also, it regulates the testes' temperature to ensure the survival of sperm. So again, same thing in bulls and in um, human men. Um, and the scrotum basically is there and allows the, the testicles to either be, well, it has to be further away from the body. So again, so the, the, the temperature of the testes is usually lower than the rest of the body. So if for interest sake, say the body temperature is 37 degrees for a human, let's say it's around the same for a bull, but the testicles then itself, because it's outside the body and the scrotum regulates the temperature, it could be two degrees usually cooler. So instead of being 37 degrees, it is 35 degrees, just warm enough to keep the sperm alive, but cool enough so that it does not, well, I'm going to say burn to death. It usually denatures because again, sperm is protein and protein can denature in high temperatures. So it's there to keep the sperm cool at cool temperatures. Okay, then the penis area obviously transports semen through the urethra and into the body of the female during mating. And also, sometimes I ask you guys for two functions of the penis. The second one is the obvious one, transports urine through the urethra during urination. So it's both there for semen deposition, putting semen into a female, but it's also there for getting rid of urine from the body. Okay, then quickly this picture to the side. This is actually the front, yeah, I want to say a front view from the bottom, if you were to lie underneath the bull and look upwards. You would have the bladder area over here, the vast difference, ignore this label, the vast difference coming into here on both sides, vast difference, then you've got the ampulla, the thickened area of your vast difference. Then you get the seminal vesicles, one on either side, so there's two of those. Then you've got your prostate gland, Here's a section of your urethra. So then from your prostate gland, um, a second after the seminal vesicles, and then you've got your pro, um, calpus glands here at the top. So what I want you guys to get from this picture is just to remember what comes first. You've got your seminal vesicles first, then prostate gland, then your calpus gland. So in this case, think of the alphabet, but in reverse. So you go from the back, S in uh, the alphabet is last, then you've got P in the middle, and then C usually at the beginning of the alphabet. So S, P, C. Similar vesicles first as the sperm is migrating, then prostate gland, then calpus glands. Okay, so then quickly with the bull, I want to talk to you guys the difference between infertility and sterility in bulls. Please, there is a big difference. Don't get confused. So infertility itself is when the bull does produce sperm but it is incapable of successfully serving a cow or actually servicing a cow to cause fertilization. So meaning the bull is fine, it's healthy, it does produce sperm, but something inhibits it or prevents it from actually mounting the cow or if he is mounted for him to put his sperm into the cow. So that's infertility. I mean, something, fertilization does not happen, but it's not because he has not no sperm. He does have sperm. Then sterility is when the bull has absolutely no sperm, or if the sperm that he has produced is so deformed, physically it can't do anything, it can't fertilize an egg cell. So that leads to unsuccessful servings or servicing. So meaning he is mounting, he's able to mount the cow, to penetrate the cow and deposit his sperm into the cow, but for some reason he has no sperm. He puts semen into the, the cow, but there's no sperm in the semen, if that makes more sense. Okay, so then factors that can lead to infertility in bulls, meaning what can cause this? So again, infertility, there is semen and there is um, sperm, but it's not working. No, no fertilization is happening. Why? Firstly, for sexual immaturity, meaning 
Um, this bull is still too young, it can't do anything. So usually for different breeds, different breeds, they reach puberty at different ages. So usually again, puberty is the area or the time in animals and humans when testosterone is being created. And again, um, testosterone, it allows the production of sperm. So in this case, there is sperm, the, it, the animal has reached puberty, but it's still pretty much immature. So meaning that it can't do anything, there is maybe not enough sperm, there is sperm, but not enough, so fertilization doesn't happen. And secondly, lack of experience, again, for a young animal. The young bulls, they want to mate with a cow, but for some reason they don't know what to do, so they can't deposit their sperm into the cow. And thirdly, exhaustion, that actually happens a lot. So meaning if the animal is too hot on the, um, if the temperature is too hot on the outside, the animal's tired the whole time, it hasn't been able to drink enough water. Maybe the animal has been running around fighting another bull. Now it is very, very exhausted and can't physically mate with a cow. Fourthly, malnutrition. Again, not enough food means there won't be enough sperm produced. There could be sperm, but maybe not enough. The animal isn't healthy. Then also diseases. So again, many of the diseases that cause fever and anemia in the, the cattle can actually also cause that um, the, the sperm aren't doing their job. So the sperm maybe cannot be deposited into the female because of fever in the animal. And again, anemia means this le less blood flow in the animal or a lack of iron. So these can cause the animal not to have enough sperm. Then also temperament, meaning lack of libido. So libido refers to sexual desire. So maybe because the animal has been bred um, or selected to be so calm um, and easy to handle that now for some reason it has no desire to actually mount the cow. This can actually happen. So it has a lack of libido. So again, libido, sexual desire. So meaning it doesn't have any sexual desire. It has sperm, but is not servicing the cow. And also a change in environment. Again, this goes with temperature. Maybe the animal comes from a very cold region in the country. Now it's been bought and taken to a very hot area in the country. And for some reason, it's way too hot, it can't do anything, it doesn't want to mount the cow, so then it eats it. And lastly, impotence. Impotence means that the bull cannot have uh, erection. So meaning again, erection is when the penis is able to fill with blood, and it will be able to ejaculate, meaning get rid of the sperm out of the body. So then it has impotence due to congenital defects. This means it's been born this way. It's a genetic defect that for some reason this bull cannot have an erection. Uh, sometimes it can be because of injuries. The animal has physically been hurt, maybe the penis area, or due to, due to illness it can't do anything. So again, these are examples of when a bull does have sperm, but it cannot put the sperm into the cow for some reason. Then lastly, we have factors leading to sterility in bulls, meaning this bull now does not make sperm for some reason, or maybe because it does make sperm, but there's something wrong with the sperm. So before I go through the examples, I want to sh show you guys here at the bottom some examples of normal sperm. This is usually what we think of what a sperm should look like. Head, mid, piece, and tail. But you can get to very weird looking sperm. So abnormal sperm. Here we see one with a tail that's a little bit too long. Again, this can also cause the sperm not to be able to swim efficiently. You want a tail, but the tail is not too long. Here's one with a very small head. So meaning maybe there's no genetic um, material on the inside, no DNA. This one has two heads. So again, it's a little bit um, iffy. Which one will fertilize the egg? Maybe there will be too much DNA on the inside. So again, you won't have the right amount of chromosomes entering the egg cell, so that's also caused some, um, meaning there will be no fertilization happening actually. Then you can have one with two tails. This actually does happen a lot in real life, that the two heads and the two tails does happen. Uh, here's one with a weirdly shaped head, maybe there's no DNA on the inside. Here's one, it also looks a little bit weirdly shaped head, maybe there's also something wrong on the inside. I'm um, not seeing one without a, with a midsection. Sometimes it also happens that one of the sperm does not have a middle section here with no mitochondria. So meaning they can't swim, they don't have enough energy, they have the tail, but they can't swim all the way. So then in this case, it's also two with long tails. 
and I'm assuming something wrong, okay, in this case, maybe something wrong with the midsection area, and this guy just completely looks very, very weird. So point being, if there's something wrong with the sperm, the way they look, they can't swim efficiently, or they don't have the right amount of DNA, so then fertilization can't happen. Okay, so some factors. Again, climate. If there's too much high temperatures, the, from, uh, the, the sperm can denature, and it's meaning they get hurt, they can't fertilize. Then again, malnutrition, if that, if that bull has not been eating healthily and he doesn't have enough nutrients and he can't produce any sperm. Then diseases such as gall sickness and red water, for two examples, this affects the sperm itself. So again, it could mean the animal is um, sterile, no sperm being produced, or maybe it can, the red water and stuff also causes defects in the sperm. Then also infection of the sex organs, so meaning when the testicles has been um, got an infection, there's inflammation, it got hurt in some way, meaning again, if there's no testicles, there will be no sperm. So that can definitely happen, the infection basically, or maybe injuries to the testicles itself. Then lastly, congenital deformities, and this is where they mean a genetic defect of the sperm itself. So maybe there's something wrong with this bull specifically, because maybe its father could not produce normal sperm and now it cannot produce normal sperm, so it's a genetic problem, and that unfortunately cannot be fixed. Okay, and then again, I hope you guys did some homework after this.